Hey everyone, Christian here, and I was going to do a little bit of an update on my germination of Sabinaria magnifica, also known as the butterfly palm. So if you haven't watched the first video, I recommend watching that. It's about two months old or so, and um, you know, I this is it's where I showed myself germinating these seeds that look like this um, in these bins with orchid moss. And this is kind of like a two month update, so to speak, and what I'm doing with them now. So all in all, um, I sold some of the seeds and I've sold some of the germinated seeds, but uh, I had a hundred seed in total. And I eventually got a, another 50 seed, which I was not expecting. I mean, I did pay for it, but I wasn't, I didn't, it was a little bit complicated, but I ended up getting a hundred seed and I would say I got about 80% germination, maybe a little bit more. And so now they've been in these bins for almost two months and they've been sitting in probably about uh, 35, yeah, 32 to 34 Celsius or about 90 to 95 Fahrenheit. I believe that's about the right conversion there. Uh, maybe a little bit higher on the Celsius side. But uh, now you can see they have quite large roots coming out. And so this is my first time germinating them. So I didn't know what to expect as far as depth. And I was off a little bit. Uh, you can see this guy hit bottom and started curving around. One thing, one that's one reason why you want to have a deeper pot when you're germinating, remotely germinating seeds. They tend to go down quite a bit. Some really don't go down much, but uh, larger seeded uh, palms that are remotely germinating will tend to go down up to 12 inches, if not deeper. Stuff like Bismarck's, Borassus, obviously Sabinaria, as we can see, and um, and, you know, many, even Siagras can go down quite a bit, uh, you know, queen palms can, before they uh, throw up a leaf. So here they are, you can see in all their glory, I'm gonna be kind of delicate here because each one of these is a little bit on the more expensive side. And <clears throat> they did pretty well in the moss. I didn't ever have to add water or get rid of any. It was a little bit on the wetter side, I believe. And I think that I probably should have made it drier because I did have a little bit of, puddle, of puddling water at the bottom when I was kind of picking through them. This other bin here, I think it might have a few leftover seeds in it, but it's pretty much just moss now. I've potted up um, about 25 of these and I have another 10 or 12 to pot up. Uh, the rest were sold. So um, these are going into four, four by 10 inch or three by 10 inch pots. So they're 10 inches deep, uh, three inches wide. And they'll probably go from there into like a three to five gallon size pot. So uh, the one thing I want to kind of show about remote germinating, I believe it shows it on this. Yeah, if you can look right here. Now, can you see where the, the root is splitting? Right where the moss is kind of attached right there, right beyond my uh, left thumb there. Um, you can see where the, the moss is attached. Um, and it, the root is splitting. Now that would be kind of a cause of concern for a lot of people, but what it's actually doing is kind of creating sort of a bulbous matter to create a spike that will eventually grow back up. So when you see that splitting, that's actually the next step in the growth of the, of the palm. Um, you know, it puts down uh, a cotyledon, like its first root, and then that splits, the root will eventually split and it's, it's much more pronounced in larger rooted palms and in small remotely germinating ones, you can barely see it if at all. But in these large ones, you can see it. So when it splits, a little bit, a little spike will come up out of it. Uh, depending on the size, the brassus one will split, make a massive split and this big bulbous uh, chunk will just kind of hang out and then it'll put up a, a large leaf. But uh, these put up a decent sized first leaf, but nothing like brassus. Um, they 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 do look pretty nice. They have a silvery underside, and uh, they'll they'll be just a strap leaf, and then they'll start to go uh, palmate over time. And uh, <clears throat> I look forward to doing another video where I can show, you know, when they start putting up new their first leaves. I'll be very excited. That's kind of like the most ex well, the, besides them germinating. The most exciting part is actually um, watching them put up their first leaf. So knowing that they've kind of gone, you know, they're ready to grow in the outside world instead of in a con, you know contained environment so here i got like my last 10 or 12 i have a couple if you can see over here this one is the base is kind of rotted and uh that's probably from a little bit of ex excessive water but when you're germinating like 100 seeds and only a couple die once germinated that's not too bad 
Uh, you don't want like a mass rotting. That's where you can, you know, that something kind of went wrong and you have to maybe adjust, but less water, maybe some more water if they dry, dried up, if they, you know, just kind of became brittle. These are, you know, soft. So that's a sign that they got, they rotted. They didn't dry out. They definitely didn't dry out in here, but the orchid moss was great. Um, it, uh, I didn't, like I said, I have to add or take out any water. You can see there's no mold. I can actually reuse this moss again and germinate more seed in it. So it's very useful, even though it is, this moss here and that moss there together is about $15 worth. But if you can reuse it and you're using it for, you know, uh, ex more expensive uh, plants that you're working with, it is very much worth it instead of trying to, uh, you know, it's a very controlled environment and it is very rewarding as far as um, the reusability of it and the fact that you will not get, you know, fungus or mold unless the plants are, you know, really full of it themselves. So, but yeah, I will go ahead and I'll do a little, uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, flip over to where these things are potted up. And um, so I'm going to pause it right now and we're going to go outside. Okay, so we were outside here and these were the first 25 that I potted up. You can see I left a little bit of the root exposed and without, I don't want to, you can see how deep this pot is. I don't think that any roots are showing. Yeah, there's no, probably nothing's going to show for at least a few weeks. But uh, they're they're kept in pretty much 100% shade, and they're going to be used to that since uh, they do grow in the understory of rain, you know, the rainforest. Um, but yeah, they are just going to. They're in a relatively heavy soil, uh, just natural to the, where they grow. I mean, it isn't. The native soil where they grow but it's just natural that the soil is a little bit on the heavier side more organic material and i you know you want to leave it you don't want to leave the seed like you don't want to bury the seed but you don't want to leave it too high because then it puts a little bit of torsion on the root and then it can actually break off right at the seed and you don't want that to happen either you kind of just want them to lie kind of a third to one half of the way into the uh the soil there so when these start to put out leaves i will make another video but until then thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up if you're new to the channel and you want to see more palm related vlogs go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification i do go live quite a bit and uh, if you have any questions about sabinaria or if you'd like to get some leave a comment down below and i will get back to you guys as soon as i can thanks for watching